with common numerators and common denominators. We're going to start with common numerators. If the numerators or the number on the top is the same, so they have the same quantity, we're just going to be thinking about that size of piece. So what is bigger, a fourth or a fifth? Well, remember, it's what you're sharing. So would you rather share a pot of gold with among a total of four people or a total of five people? We'd rather share it with a total of four people because then each person would get more of the piece. So we're just going to go ahead and draw some fraction bars here to show. We want to make sure that our holes are the same size. So I'm just going to stack my fraction bars on top of one another. And so for two fourths, fourths, I'm going to put a line down the middle, one to the left, one to the right, three lines makes four equal pieces. So for fifths, I'm going to draw a total of four lines to make five equal pieces. One, two, three, and it's not perfect, which is why fraction bars are not always the best. And we have two fourths versus two fifths. And as we can see, the fourth sizes, each one of these is a bigger. This one fourth is bigger than this one fifth. Therefore, if I have two of them, then of course that's going to be greater. So thinking about six first eighths, same thing. We are just going to be thinking about those fraction bars stacked on top of each other, six first eighths. And since they're both even, I can go ahead and draw a line straight to the middle for the halfway point. For six, I'm going to have one, two lines to the left and one, two lines to the right for a total of five lines to make six equal pieces. And for eighths, I'm going to draw a line down the middle to make fourths first and then half each one of those to make eighths. So this would be one out of six and this would be one out of eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's double check. So three six would be all the way half. And I should know that three eighths would be less than a half since four eighths is our half. So I already should know using that benchmark knowledge of where zero half and one are that three six would be greater than three eighths, right? Because this would be our bigger size piece. So even though a six is less than eight in fractions, that means that I've cut it, I've shared it with fewer amount of people. So that means that I've cut larger pieces. So the smaller the denominator, the bigger the piece, the bigger it is. So now we have quantities more than one, five fourths versus five thirds. So again, same thing, I can, use a number line this time. I'm just going to stack two number lines for fourths and thirds. So I want to make sure that my um, baseline zero is at the exact same spot and my benchmark numbers such as one whole and two whole are at the same spot. For fourths, I'm going to make four equal pieces. So I'm going to draw a line in the middle of each of those. And then thinking four equal pieces between zero and one would be a line in the middle and a line in the middle. So three total lines, make four equal pieces. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. All right, I want four pieces between zero and, or one and two. So for five fourths, this would be one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. One whole would be four fourths, and right next to it would be five fourths. And then thirds, so I'm just going to be adding two lines between zero and one for thirds, where this would be one third and two thirds. And notice that one third is more than one fourth. It's further down towards one. And then one, two over here. So one would be three thirds. So that means this is four thirds, and here is five thirds. Two would be our six thirds, because six divided by three is two. 
So here's my five thirds, and then we can see clearly that it's closer to two. That's further down to the right on our number line. There's four thirds, right? Even if I just looked, this one third is bigger than this one four. So then if I have five of something that's bigger to start with, of course, that's going to be more. So five fourths is less than five thirds. So using that pattern, if I'm just looking at tenths for twelfths, the smaller the denominator, the bigger the piece. So ten would be a bigger piece than twelfths. Therefore, four tenths would be greater than four twelfths. So what's my rule? You're going, if the numerators are the same, so if the numerators are equivalent or the same, right? That's what that word means. Then look for the largest sized piece. So you're going to look at the denominator. The smaller the denominator's number, the greater its size. Okay, now what if the denominators are the same? So now we have fourths, they're both six, they're both fourths, they're both tenths. This is probably the easiest one. We always want to have it common denominators because now they're the same size. I love to think of this in money terms. If um, four quarters make a dollar. So we're thinking of two quarters versus three quarters. They're the same size of piece. I've cut the one whole into four equal pieces. Two of those pieces versus three of those pieces. So we can go ahead and draw it out. Again, stacking our models on top of each other since they're fourths, the pieces are going to be the exact same size. Right? Two of them. versus three of them. Clearly, two-fourths is less than three-fourths. Two-quarters, 50 cents. Three-quarters, 75 cents. Two-fourths is less than three-fourths. So using that same idea, if these are the same size, three is greater than one. If these are the same size, eight is greater than five. If these are the same size, four is less than six. So what's my rule? If the fraction size is the same, meaning the denominator is the same, then the numerator with the largest value is bigger. All right, thanks again.